Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at 20 plus essential CSS properties. Now keep in mind that if you're an experienced CSS developer, most of these today you're probably already going to know. But we are going to start with some of the more basic ones before moving on to the more advanced or intermediate ones. And also keep in mind that I do plan to create a second one of these videos explaining something like 25 plus more advanced or uh, you know unknown CSS properties. So for those of you who are a bit more advanced that video should be better for you guys And just quickly if this is your first time watching uh, my channel consider subscribing as I've got plenty of beautiful web development tutorials and projects on there and now let's get right into the first CSS property Width allows you to set the width of an element. Keep in mind that you can't set the width on most inline elements such as anchor tags or spans. Similarly, height allows you to set the height of an element and much like width, you're unable to set the height on most inline elements. As the name implies, max width will prevent the width of an element from going over a value that you set. For example, setting a max width on a paragraph tag will ensure that the text will never go too far across the screen and it's also going to be responsive on mobile devices. The margin property allows you to add space between the target element and its surroundings. This is actually a shorthand property and so you're able to set the margin for all four sides at once, that being top, right, bottom and left. Padding is the cousin to margin. With padding, you're setting space between the element's content and its border. By default, padding is going to increase the width and height of your element. Now, if you don't want padding or borders to increase the width and height of your element, you can set the box sizing property to border box. This is very useful if you don't want your padding and borders to mess up your designs. Font family allows you to set a list of font families for your element. It's separated by commas, which means if the browser can't find the first font in the list, it's going to fall back to the second and the third and then so on. Font weight allows you to set the weight of the font. Commonly, you'd use this property to create bold text. You can also provide a numeric value if your font supports it, such as 300, 500 or 600, and they go up in terms of boldness. As the name implies, font size lets you change the size of your font. It's okay to use pixel values here, but the EM unit is commonly used for relative sizes, meaning that 2 EM is two times the current font size, for example. And to wrap up the font properties, we have font style. This one here is commonly used to create italic text. Text align has to be a crowd favorite. With text align, you're aligning the text within an element. This is commonly used to create centered text. Line height is definitely one of the most underrated CSS properties and is personally one of my favorites. It allows you to set how much space is between each line of text. For legibility, I recommend using a line height of 1.4 to 1.6. Letter spacing lets you set the space between your letters of text. You can use this to create fancy titles. The user select property can be used to prevent users from highlighting the text within your elements. Of course, they can always go inside the browser dev tools and remove this property, but it can be useful for things like UI components, so buttons, drop down menus, etc. Now look, Everyone thinks they know what the color property does, but did you know that the color property also specifies the color of your border? To simplify it, if you don't set the color of your border using the border color property, it's going to use the text color instead. The background color property is pretty self-explanatory. This one here lets you change the background color of your elements. It also supports the RGBA value, which means you can specify RGB plus an alpha channel, which is basically just opacity. For example, setting 0.5 in the alpha channel will create a 50% opaque background color. 
The border property allows you to set a border around your element. You can set three values at once here, width, style and color. Keep in mind that this is also a shorthand property and will set all four sides at once. The border radius property is probably one of the most loved CSS properties. This one is going to give you rounded corners on your elements and you can set a pixel value here for example. Also keep in mind that this is a shorthand property and will set all four corners at once. The box shadow property allows you to set a shadow behind your elements. You'd commonly set the horizontal offset, vertical offset, blur amount and color here. And you can even use the RGBA which we looked at earlier. The object fit property can be used to dictate how images display inside their containers. This is commonly used when you have a set width and height on an image but don't want to skew the aspect ratio. If you want to create nice looking transitions when your CSS properties change, you can use the transition property. Specify a property and duration and you're good to go. You can also set a timing function and delay. You typically use this in combination with a pseudo class such as hover to give your users a change of appearance when they hover over an element. The cursor property is used to change the cursor which gets displayed when hovering over an element. For example, you can set the cursor property to pointer to suggest to your users that an element can be clicked on. The display property is used to change the display behavior of an element. There are many popular values for this including none to hide your element or even things like flex or grid to give you access to CSS flexbox or grid respectively. I recommend you watch some videos on CSS flex and grid to gain some more insight into those. As the name suggests, the opacity property lets you change the opacity of an element. For example, setting 0.5 will make the element 50% opaque. Keep in mind that even if you set this value to 0, the element will still take up space on the web page, unlike display none, which will act as if the element isn't there at all. The overflow property dictates what happens when the content inside your element gets too big for its bounds. For example, if you set a 100 pixel height on your paragraph tag, you can set an overflow Y of auto to maintain the 100 pixel height, but instead add a scroll bar when the content inside of it goes too big for 100 pixels. Similarly, you can set this property to hidden to hide that extra content as we can see right here. And that is all for today guys, if you enjoyed today's video drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.